Hey there fit fam, Michael here, MorelliFit.com and in this video we are going to talk about how to maximize your cheat meals so that you don't store body fat. For those of you that are looking for body composition changes and are looking to continue to lose weight in the form of fat because let's say, let's face it, we don't want to lose muscle, we want to lose fat. So it's called fat loss, not weight loss. We're going to talk about cheat meals in this video. Um, really quickly, this has got to be like the last video that I'm doing in my basement. Uh, if for those of you who have been following me, you know I'm building uh, a facility and I'm expected to be in there by Thursday. Um, got a great big whiteboard and some equipment and, and we are going to get, things are going to get really exciting. I'm going to be able to show you a ton more. Uh, I feel so crammed in here. So, but, uh, but it's been fun, right? And, and it's all about the information. So I hope again that, that you benefit from, uh, from the information in these videos. So let's talk about cheat meals really quickly and three things here that I'm going to talk about. The first thing uh, that surrounds uh, cheat meals is the fact that you build resiliency. So without putting things into your body that you're not supposed to, you don't know how those things make you feel. So the first thing is you've got to clean up your diet. Right? So if you've been following me, you know whole foods from as close to nature as possible. We're talking about heavy meat and veggies. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about seeds and nuts, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of starch, and no sugar. So if you're not following, you know, if you haven't eliminated processed foods, refined carbs, and sugar from your diet, you, you really, this, the cheat meals idea is really pointless for you. Right? So it builds resiliency. Once your diet is so clean that you go and you decide to cheat, and we know, right, we like carbs, we like sugar, so you cheat with carbs and sugar, you're going to feel the effects of that. You're going to feel the effects of that and you're going to say, oh gosh, so that's what happens when I put those things in my body. And, uh, and so that's the resilience piece that I'm talking about. So let's talk about cheat meals and the rule of thumb that I like to use. I like to use a 90-10 rule. That means 90% of the time you're eating clean, 10% of the time, 10% of your meals are cheat meals. What does this mean? Let's say you're doing three meals a day times seven days in a week. That's 21 meals, all right? Out of 21 meals, if we use the 90-10 rule, that means two out of 21 are cheat meals. Now, you can certainly follow this if your diet is dialed in and you're training, you're doing your training, whatever your training might be, you can follow this, this sort of 90-10 rule and be a-okay, all right? If you want to take this 90-10 this rule and dial it in even a little bit further, there's one more thing you can do and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about timing really quick. So your body is depleted of glucose after you train. The harder you train, the more glucose your body uses. And so after you train is when your body can absorb glucose without storing it as fat. Now depends on your glucose levels and, and there, it depends on a, a bunch of different factors. I guess what I'm trying to say here is this, all right? If there is the, uh, if there is the best time to consume carbs, uh, i.e. cheat meals, it's after your highest intensity, highest volume training day within 30 to 60 minutes. All right, you could essentially feed your face and not have to worry about storing that excess uh, storing that excess body fat because your body needs the glucose, right? So that is the timing piece in a nutshell. Now, of course, this varies based on body composition and and uh, and BMI and all of that. I'm just I'm just saying if 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 you want to take the the 90/10 rule one step further, you can do that by consuming your cheat meal, your carbs right after your workout. All right, that's the best time essentially is what I'm trying to say. So you know that. You know, you got, you got XYZ on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday is heavy legs and some, uh, some aerobic work. Boom. You save one of your cheat meals for there. So now you've got one left. All right. And now, you know, on Sunday, you've got another high intensity piece. And, uh, and so then you've got, you've got your, your cheat meal for after that workout. So again, that's really getting, really dialing it in. You know, if you're, if you're, you could certainly, most certainly just stay here. And, and be just fine. So that's what I have uh, as far as cheat meals are concerned. I hope the information was, was useful. I get a lot of questions about cheat meals and, and timing and, and what do you do. And so if you have additional questions, 
that, uh, that surround this sort of maximizing your cheat meals topic, leave those below. I personally go through and answer questions. Uh, I, I answer the questions myself. If you've got an idea for another video or, or um, you know, maybe you've, got a, uh, maybe you've got another question that's not related to this, leave that below too. I'm, I'm always looking for, for new ideas. I will see you in, in the new facility and uh, thank you so much for, for checking this out. And as I, uh, as I always say at close, it's, it's stay the course, be patient, train hard, and let's get fit together. Take care.